is your diamond inside for tonight of the Lusaka and Dola Dio carriageway concession. For about two decades, the famous T2 highway between Lusaka and the Copper Belt province linking the rest of Zambia has been wearing out due to increased traffic. The poor state of the road infrastructure has led to countless accidents that have led to deaths and loss of property. In mitigating the problem in September of 2017, former President Edgar Lung commissioned the construction of the dual carriageway at a cost of 1.2 billion United States dollars for the 327 kilometer road, but the figure sparked national debate. At that time, many questioned the rationale in the $3 million per kilometer deal, which was deemed exorbitant, especially that it was to be financed by loans. However, the New Dawn government's rise to power canceled the project. Now that the UPNE has embarked on a similar project, but at $550 million less under the public-private partnership or triple P arrangement for over $649 million driven by NAPSA is one move to be commended, especially that it will also cater for the 45-kilometer stretch of the Fisenge Masangana roads of Luansha district. The scope of the project shall mean and include performance and execution by the concessionaire of all design, engineering, financing, procurement, construction, completion, operation, and maintenance of the project infrastructure as follows. One, the construction of a dual carriageway from Lusaka to Ndola. Secondly, the construction of Kabuka Pirimposhi bypasses. Three, rehabilitation of 45 kilometers of the Masangano Fisenge Luansha Road. And four, the construction of two new toll plazas. Others include the construction of two-way bridges. And finally, the expansion and improvement of existing bridges. Further, the concession period will be 25 years, in which three years will be for construction and 22 years for operations and maintenance by Macro Oceans Investment Limited. As we upload the lean budget, our expectation is to have quality works that will sustain Zambia's reliability as a SADC transfrontier corridor in commerce and industry between the DRC and the other land-linked neighbors. While we advance this project, government may relook its policy on the transportation of heavy cargo and give chance to the railway sector that has been limping even when funds from the 750 million euro bond were injected into the rail system. Therefore, the onus is on leaders in all ranks to engage their respective communities that are in the path of the project of the short-term consequences to advanced development. Well done, New Dawn. Well done, UPND for finally making amends on this important economic road that has been seen as a death trap. Let the bulldozers, shovels and the bitumen move on for us to see the wheels of commerce back into business.